Medical billing isn't easy, but you already knew that. As you know, there is a ton of work and steps that go into submitting medical claims. There are so many steps that over 200 million claim rejections happen every single day. But what if I told you that there was one step you could take right now that could single-handedly increase your revenue overnight? Hi everyone, I'm Matt from eTactics and today I'm going to explain why you should always submit your claims to your clearinghouse before an insurance payer. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button below. While you're down there, hit that alert bell icon next to it as well, so when we post new helpful content, you get notified. If you take anything away from this video, it should be this. Your medical clearinghouse is your best friend. Medical clearinghouses usually have a negative connotation associated with them, but they are actually one of your biggest allies. They exist to get you paid by insurance payers. It's that simple. Payers are the enemy. Not really, but you get the idea. Now that we're on the same side, let's answer the burning question. Why should you submit your claims to your clearinghouse before an insurance payer? Well, the short answer to that question is utilizing clearinghouse level rejections, which is also sometimes called claim scrubbing. Clearinghouse level rejections are better than payer level rejections. That's the bottom line. Here's why. Insurance payers are massive organizations that receive and process hundreds of thousands, if not millions of claims every single year. Let's run some quick numbers on that statement that I just made. Aetna estimates on its website that 39 million Americans rely on its services. According to the National Center for Health Statistics, 83.4% of adults and 94% of children visited the doctor in 2020. Let's assume that Aetna isn't including children and dependents in the estimated number that I just gave you. If you take the number of Americans that rely on Aetna and multiply it by the percentage of adults who went to the doctor in 2020, you get 32,526,000. That's the total number of claims that Aetna processed in 2020 based on these assumptions. If you took 32,526,000 and divided it by the total number of days in a year, or 365, you're left with an estimate of 89,112 claims submitted to Aetna every day. Now, a quick Google search tells us that Aetna has over 45,000 employees. But even then, staying on top of that heaping pile of claims to process, it leads to delays. There's just too many of them. Thus, counting on your payers to provide you with your rejections prior to processing leads to delays. What's worse, sometimes payers, usually the smaller ones, don't provide rejections and all of the claims you submit go straight to processing. If you submit your claim to a payer, it usually takes around two days before you'd receive a rejection status. Denials usually take between two weeks and a few months before they come back to you. Although rejections happen faster, two days is still a lot longer than clearinghouse level rejections. What's worse is that payers don't keep a record of rejected claims since it never processed them within its system. In other words, you only have one opportunity to reveal why your payer rejected your claim. And after that, it's gone. You see, your clearinghouse exists as the middleman between you and the payer. They should act as your right-hand person when it comes to claims. Thus, you should be able to submit your claims to your clearinghouse for its review before you do anything with the payer. Submitting claims for clearinghouse review leads to claim rejections. But that's not a bad thing. You see, clearinghouse level rejections act as another layer of medical billing processes to ensure that you don't receive denials, which in turn increases your revenue. Think of it as a spell check before you submit a final paper to a teacher. Clearinghouses can provide your rejections back to you instantly and a history of your rejections exists within the system. Much better than pair level rejections, am I right? Now, if you'd like to learn more about the benefits of clearinghouse level rejections and claim scrubbing, reach out to eTactics. And you already made it this far into the video, so you might as well like it, share it, and comment below.